The battle for hypersonic weapon dominance has officially begun, and the US, Russia, and China are at it once again. The US is now making its latest move after Russia's and China's breakthroughs in the hypersonic weapon space. This latest move comes in the form of a brand new hypersonic weapon known as the Gambit missile that is expected to save the US up to $516 million while traveling faster than every hypersonic missile before it. This is made possible by the Gambit's engine that's so powerful it could power not only massive missiles, but also fighter jets and Navy ships. Yes, hypersonic missiles are a lot more than their Mach 5 plus blurry speeds, but not everyone knows that. Back in 2007, NASA defined the word hypersonic as the realm of flight where air resistance becomes the biggest problem to address, which happens to be at around Mach 5. Therefore, the word hypersonic can be used to describe the speed of any vehicle that travels at Mach 5 or faster. However, for a hypersonic missile, there are more requirements to meet. The missile must be able to travel at these blurry speeds and also maneuver in an unpredictable erratic path to evade air defense systems. This extra ability is what makes hypersonic missiles truly stand out, not their speed. In fact, all of the world's intercontinental ballistic missiles travel at hypersonic speeds, with some reaching up to Mach 20 speeds. Still, they're not commonly referred to as hypersonic missiles. This is because intercontinental ballistic missiles fly in a predictable elliptical path that makes their destinations easy to calculate. This makes them easier to intercept than a toddler's punch, especially with missile defense systems getting more advanced by the minute. Today's hypersonic missiles, on the other hand, which stay maneuverable throughout their flight, are more tasking to intercept because defense missiles can't simply fly into their path to intercept them. The hypersonic missile would simply change its direction if this happens, and at speeds exceeding Mach 5, the defense missile gets no second chance. The hypersonic missile would be closer to its target faster than some of the most powerful computers could calculate a new path. Aside from their speed, the difficulty in tracking these hypersonic missiles stems from what region in the atmosphere they operate in. They fly much higher than slower subsonic missiles, but much lower than intercontinental ballistic missiles. This means that they fly in an in-between region that neither the US, nor Russia, nor China is used to defending. To top off their invincibility, Hypersonic missiles during flight form plasma clouds that absorb radio waves and protects them from radar detection, ultimately making them stealthy weapons. But hypersonic missiles have one huge setback. They're mighty expensive. A recent U.S. Defense Department analysis indicates that hypersonic weapons under development could cost as much as $106 million each. No economy could survive firing such a weapon in a barrage which is really how missiles are fired, especially in near-peer conflicts. This is where a new missile comes in, one that saves hundreds of millions of dollars in cost while flying faster, traveling farther, and being more lethal than any before it. This is the new Gambit missile. In July 2022, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA for short, quietly unveiled the Gambit missile. The missile, packed with all the lethality of a destructive hypersonic missile, was designed to also leverage a novel method of propulsion with far more efficiency than the world knows. This propulsion system is known as the Rotating Detonation Engine, or RDE, and it has the potential to be lighter than existing jet engines while offering a significant boost in power output, range, and fuel efficiency. Rotating detonation engines achieve this by harnessing the power of detonation. Yes detonation, the explosion of a bomb, basically. Wild as that may sound, the truth is, wherever there is force, there is power to harness. This concept of harnessing detonation dates back to the 1950s, when Arthur Nichols, a professor emeritus of aerospace engineering at the University of Michigan, was among the first people to attempt to develop a working RDE design. It wasn't too much of a new idea even then, though, because in some ways, a rotating detonation engine is an extension of the concept behind pulse detonation engines, which are themselves an extension of pulse jet engines, which is where it all begins. At this point, we put on our imaginary lab coats and take a look at all three of these engines. 1. 
Pulse jet engines work by mixing air and fuel with a combustion chamber and then igniting the mixture to fire out of a nozzle in rapid pulses, rather than under consistent combustion as is seen in jet engines today. The air and fuel mixture then burns away in deflagration, steadily, peacefully, and with somewhat low energy, like a rapidly burnt candle. Two. For a pulse detonation engine, which is what in many ways births the rotating detonation engine, the engine uses explosions rather than gentle deflagration because detonation comes with significantly more energy and 20,000% faster shock waves than deflagration. This results in more thrust from the same amount of fuel and ultimately a system that propels a vehicle to speeds up to around Mach 5, the introduction to the hypersonic realm. But the world is well past introduction to hypersonic speeds, and hypersonic missiles today have the not-so-simple task of making Mach 5 seem slow. This is where the 3. Rotating Detonation Engine takes center stage. Rather than having the detonation shockwave travel out the back of the aircraft as propulsion, in rotating detonation engines, the waves travel around a circular channel within the engine itself basically recycling the same thrust over and over again. And while extra fuel is added to recycle thrust, significantly less fuel is required to do so. In addition, the engine produces continuous thrust rather than thrust in pulses like the pulse detonation engine does, resulting in better efficiency. This efficiency is what DARPA intends to exploit with the new Gambit missile. This was made clear on July 18th when they released a special note for the missile calling for firms to submit bids on developing a novel rotating detonation propulsion system that enables a mass-producible, low-cost, low-range weapon for air-to-ground strike in an anti-access environment. This anti-access environment could pertain to anywhere American forces are squaring off against a near-peer adversary. However, there's one such environment that has been the focus of multiple defense efforts in recent years. The 1,000-mile-plus area denial bubble extending from Chinese shores, thanks to a growing array of anti-ship weapon systems. Fighters would be the best bet for this environment, but the U.S.'s main carrier-based fighters, the F-35C and F-A-18 Super Hornet, each have a combat radius of fewer than 650 miles, which would mean having to sail carriers into harm's way to launch combat sorties due to the lack of longer-range munitions. The Gambit missile could solve this. Longer range, high speed, perfect fighter jet fit. A gem for both the Air Force and the Navy. It's just what the American doctor ordered. The Gambit missile could also help both services in other ways. The rotating detonation engine, which it is expected to help perfect, can be scaled up to power the Air Force's fighter jets and the Navy's non-nuclear powered ships for up to 10% more thrust, 25% better fuel efficiency, and hundreds of millions of dollars in cost cuts. The Gambit program that would birth this engine first is expected to be conducted in two 18-month phases. The first will entail competitors completing their preliminary design with some limited testing, while the second would finalize designs and culminate in full-scale flight tests of an RDE system. Until the program, along with other American hypersonic programs, reach their later stages though, Near-peer adversary China will remain at the forefront of hypersonic weapon development. China, not Russia. Because although Russia is often thought of as the first country to field a hypersonic weapon and the first to use one in combat, it appears to be some intentional misleading and these Russian hypersonic missiles are in fact not hypersonic missiles at all. As said earlier, hypersonic missiles are those that can maneuver and fly at hypersonic speeds. Still, the terming of a weapon as hypersonic missile usually only takes into factor the Mach 5 speeds, and so a missile that can't maneuver seems to be wrongly a hypersonic missile. This is the case with Russia's hypersonic missiles, particularly the Kinzhal, which is simply a short-range ballistic missile that reaches hypersonic speeds, as all ballistic missiles do. In terms of the modern definition of a hypersonic missile, China's DF-ZF is currently the world's most advanced true hypersonic missile, complete with blurry speeds and maneuvering capabilities. However, its reign may be short-lived as the new Gambit missile from DARPA continues to take shape at an impressive rate. To see both missiles go head-to-head -head in a race, subscribe to this channel and give this video a like, and we'll see what we can do. Thanks for watching.